G'day guys. Uh, last episode we fixed a uh, dog leg, dog leg up here. Uh, the dented part, remember it? Fuck. G'day guys. Last episode we fixed the dog leg up here. If you remember, she was a bit dented. Well, this episode we got a little bit of rust in the. Uh, back end of the uh, wheel arch here just give you a closer look as you can see it's got some little rust holes here previous person already fixed the back half of the uh, the uh, panel there they didn't do a, a bad job I've seen a lot worse but they they missed the uh, front part Obviously, it wasn't showing through when they did it, but uh, as time goes by, this is a 1964 car, so it's bound to come out. So, we're going to run through it. I'll show you what we're going to do to fix this up. First thing, first thing we're going to need is some paper. Now, I got this from a local printing press that... Um, prints out the local newspaper and pamphlets and so forth for people. Um, if you go in and ask, they may um, do the same for you at your local printing press. So that's worth a try. I use this paper from anything from masking up to um, what I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, but yeah, I'll uh, just rip a bit off and I'll, get, I'll show you what we're going to do. Right, we're going to um, replace it from this where the previous owner has welded in this seam here. Um, this process is pretty much the same as a tailor would use when they're uh, making a suit or some clothing garments or whatever. Um, bought these magnets off eBay. They're about five five dollars for a hundred or something like that but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get the paper and we're going to stick it to the metal with magnets just like that now we want this to conform to the shape of the metal as best we can because this is going to be your pattern for the piece of tin that you cut out. Okay, one under there. I'm going to need some more magnets, I think. Oh, got some more up here. Now, down the side. Okay, that's probably probably close enough. Oh, never mind. Don't mind that. So what we're going to do, trusty old pencil, we're going to trace the lines that need to be folded. That line fades away about there. And the cut line underneath where the quarter panel ends and around the side okay let's do 
just a bit of a squiggle so I know where the panel because that's not a sharp bend so it's just a squiggle to let, let me know where it rolls over okay we'll take that off I ripped it a bit. You know what? I'm going to make another one, but you get the idea of what I've done there. Radio. That's the pattern. That's the edge of the wheel wheel arch that we've got to fold over. Now I've marked this in texture for a reason. I want to mirror that image and um, actually mark that on the reverse side of the tin. I'll give you a reason for that in a minute. But um, first thing we're going to do is go retrieve my magnets. Just want to put the magnets on the uh, paper so it doesn't move. As you can see, I've cut the tin bigger than the paper. And I'll trim it up after I've made it because we're going to be shaping this panel. It's going to go, it's going to change shape. So I want to make sure I've got enough metal around the edge for it to, um, so it doesn't, so it's not too small. You know what I mean? <sighs> tongue tied anyway um, just using a scribe I'm gonna mark through the paper on the lines of traced just little short dashes so you don't rip the paper now the reason why I am reversing it to the opposite side of the tin is because I'm gonna hit these lines with a chisel to sharpen them up so it's uh, easier when I bend that shape it's going to make a more defined line because it's a slightly curved shape I can't bend this with a bender folder which I don't have one anyway so um, yeah <clears throat> Just marking where the uh, the rollover is as well. Couldn't be bothered shifting the camera. You can see it from there. I'll probably time lapse this a little bit anyway, make it a bit faster. It was pretty boring to watch. Yep, chiselled, as you can see on the other side, it's marked through, and it's already started to take the shape slightly, and it's going to make it easier. Yes, my vice lives under the bench for now. I am going to build a larger bench, workbench, which the vice will have a permanent bolted down spot. Um, time is... Uh, something I don't have a lot of at the moment, but it will get done. Now, the vice is my folder for now. Um, baby steps. Just going to fold both edges over partly.
a little bit of a tap with a hammer along the line. Okay. We're probably going to work on this line first and get that right before we fold that one over. This makes it easier for the to get it in the vise. But no, guys, I did not just magically change my shirt. It's a whole nother day. Um, my phone ran out of uh, memory and um, I might have lost a bit of recording from uh, the video. So. Uh, where we are at, I've decided I am going to, where are you, the out, uh, inside edge of the wheel arch, there, I'm going to uh, shape that up first because I've got to shrink it around the radius there so it uh, matches the uh, wheel arch of the actual car. So I'm going to fold that over in the vise. I need a tapping device. Thy hammer. Oh, by the way, I got my um, wet media blasting attachment for my pressure washer, so there will be a video on that as well. If not, uh, it may even come out before this video is finished recording, so ignore that. Take you back over to the car for a second. Look at those webs. Something pretty cool is living under there. I hope it's not redbacks. Um, anyway, what we got to do is we got to mimic this around here onto this piece of tin. There's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, I'll show you my way and I'll also explain, explain the way that you can do it if you do not have the tools to do so. Okay. It's my shrinker stretcher. It's got jaws um, with little teeth on it and as you um, you pull the, the foot pedal down, it pulls this lever down, and it'll, for the uh, shrinker, it'll push the jaws together, which in turn grabs hold of the metal and just pushes it together and shrinks it, shrinks it up. Um, the stretcher is obviously does the opposite, it pulls it apart and stretches the metal apart. Um, you, to change the jaws, you've got little screws on the side, and these jaws just pull out and you swap them over, put shrinker roots, uh, stretcher jaws in. Um, you can also get them double headed so you've got the foot pedal on this side as well and um, that way you don't have to change your jaws, I'd love that because it would save me a lot of time. But what we're going to do is um, edge of the wheel arch here, we've got to stretch that to try and bend it around. So that's what, uh, sorry, shrink it to try and bend it around. If I shrink it too far, then I'll have to stretch it, but my stretching jaws are at work, so um, I hope I don't do that. You 
see that, how it's bent around? Alright, I think we need to go a little bit further and then we'll go and do a trial fit to see what's happening. Alright, I think I got it pretty close. As you can see, that profile is not too bad. So I'll clamp it on. Find a spot for my camera. Oh, sorry guys, I'll edit that out. Alright, as you can see, I now have this line correct. It's, sit it's fitting nice and snug the whole way around there. Um, as I was saying, there's more than one way to do this. If you don't have a shrinker stretcher, um, what you can do is you can just put a, a slice through to the edge there, a couple of slices, and then bend it around, and then cut it through neatly uh, after you bend it around, and then weld it up. Um, I might show you that technique another time. Um, there's nothing really wrong with it. Uh, it's just you have to clean up welds afterwards this way is just a bit neater uh, less heat in the metal uh, anyway um, as you can see now I've just got to um, hollow this out a bit so it fits snugly, snugly into that reverse curve and I'm going to trim it off a bit because I don't need it up that high so I'm going to trim the top off and uh, that'll make it easier to work Oh, and um, these clamps are really handy, vice grips, you got different sorts. Um, these ones are for getting into gutters and holding stuff like that, yada yada. There's uh, long jaw ones. Um, also, Clecos are handy, they're like reusable pop rivets. Um, I don't have any, but I, I plan on getting some. Uh, there's all different sorts of fasteners, even tech screws. If you don't have Clecos, do the same thing, and they're reusable as well. Um, all right, I'll, uh, yep. As you can see, it's starting to look like the back end of a wheel arch. Um, what we've got to do now is make this hollow more pronounced what we got to do for that is to stretch it um, the way I'm going to do that is smack the smack the um, shit out of it with a hammer I'm using a small ball peen hammer because it doesn't need a huge amount of sh uh, shrinking um, uh, just enough to so it doesn't distort when it when um, the panel is fully formed. Um, got my trusty wood block. I'll give you a closer look. As you, as you can see, I've rounded an edge off to make round edges. It's got a hollow in the middle for um, stretching. Um, I'm not going to use that, I'm just going to use a flat surface. I've actually got a, a, a larger block I'm going to uh, make up so I can get a bigger stretching hollow, but uh, this one will do for now. All right, now this is going to look ugly for a bit. You've got to make it ugly before it looks good. Get on the flat surface and just along where the hollow needs to be, we're going to dent it up. As you can see, that doesn't look pretty. But 
get my wood block down. Now I'll flatten it out a bit on the anvil. looking a bit flatter. So I've got the shape pretty good. I'm just going to run it through my air hammer just to um, plenish out the rough bits here. I stretch that out with a uh, ball pen hammer on the um, wood stump. Just stretch the metal through there to get the shape. So yeah, we'll just set up for the um, air hammer now. This is bloody noisy so Is the shape I need. So now I just got to cut, uh, scribe it, scribe it out along here, there, somewhere, and then I'll cut it out with the uh, angle grinder. Always make sure there's nothing on the inside of your quarter panel that's going to catch on fire or wiring that you're going to cut so I'll uh, open the boot and I'll make sure there's nothing in there and then I'll get cutting as you can see it's only held in place by one clamp and um, it's pre fitting uh, pretty flush the whole way around uh, with TIG you want as little gap as possible that's uh, just poking out a bit there but uh, what I've done is when I scribed the line and then cut it out I cut on the inside of the uh, scribe line because um, it's better to be able to trim a little bit off to make it fit otherwise you're gonna have a big gap um, <clears throat> when I cut it off it's uh, reasonably solid inside Cleaned it up a bit with the grinder and the wire wheel, but now I'm going to coat it with um, KBS. KBS Rust Seal. This stuff loves rust. It'll um, it'll stick to it and it'll keep it keep it uh, sealed in, and it won't be able to spread. It's really good stuff. You get this stuff from Lonsdale Crash in South Australia. It's good. I like it. Um, usually when I uh, 
when I'm not using it I'll put a piece of plastic over the top before I put the lid on otherwise you won't get the lid off it likes to glue itself shut um, that's, that's the way you do it so I'm gonna give that a coat and I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow because that takes a long time to dry I'm not gonna put it on the the, uh, the faces where it's got to be plug welded or spot welded back together because you won't be able to weld through it I'll, I'll hit that with weld through primer instead but um, it's a nice bronze weld through primer that I'll use for that um, so I'll coat that up and I'll see you tomorrow night bye here we are back again so I've hit the inside of the wheel arch with the KBS rust treatment and I have done the flanges with um, U-pole number two weld through copper rich primer now because it's full of copper co copper is conductive so it makes it easier to weld through and it protects the bare metal after you welded it that's the main reason for that so we're going to TIG it in with the TIG um, I've put the uh, copper primer on the back of that as well but we're going to TIG it in I prefer to TIG for a few reasons um, one of which it doesn't throw sparks everywhere and um, it, it's also a nicer weld it's less to clean up because there's um, no not as much build on the welds and um, it's easier to work the metal afterwards so I'm going to set up the TIG and we'll get TIGging I did forget to mention I drilled these holes um, because I'm going to do plug welds to weld it back to the body and there's some underneath as well this is not a very comfortable position so we'll see how we go here So I'm going to um, tack it the whole way around before I start running the bead. shouldn't be able to uh, shouldn't uh, be able to open up the gaps so I'll make a pass across the top and across the bottom um, the world is set at roughly 30 amps um, using a 0.6 tungsten and 0.6 wire um, I, I find it the best for uh, this thin sheet metal um, you don't want to turn your heat down too low otherwise uh, you have to move too slow and that um, will end up with more heat and uh, warping your panels so I'll uh, do a pass now and then I'll uh, come back to you got a bit ugly in some places because um, it's really hard when the uh, when you got old tin like this and it's always dirty on the inside that's why I, I prefer if I've got the time to take the whole panel off um, that way you can clean it up properly on the inside this part here was full of seam sealer so it just blew out and then I had to fill it up with weld with uh, filler rod 
so it doesn't look pretty at all but it's on there um, I'll grind it down and you'll barely know it was there um, but now I've got to change over to the MIG welder so I can do these plug welds um, there's no point wasting TIG on plug welds you can do it but it's it wastes filler wire, it wastes gas, so it's, it's not worth it. It's just a lot quicker to do it with a MIG. Done deadlies. So, it's a little bit of a low spot here, but I'll um, get my dent puller onto that and uh, pull it out a bit, so it's going to need minimal body filler. Um, yeah, so that's that. So, um, next on the list... I guess we'll be getting it outside so I can uh, media blast this quarter panel because it's got a lot of surface rust on it. Um, that, that way I can then put some epoxy primer on it to seal it up. And then I'll move on to the next panel, which might be the other side of the car. I'll pull off a door and um, yeah, I'll media blast it and I'll see what rusts in it. Hopefully none. That way I don't have to fix it, but I'll take you along for the ride anyway. I'll let you know what's going on. Um, it's a bit of rust in the boot, in the corner of the boot. We'll fix that later. Um, but I'll get the sides done first. And then I've got to blast the roof because there's a lot of rust, uh, surface rust pitting in the roof. So we've got to get that off. Um, got lots more stuff coming up. But first... I'll let you know this Pontiac will be for sale um, when I've finished it. It's got to fund the next project, um, whatever that will be, uh, and also free up a lot of room in my shed because it does take up a lot of space. It's a big car. Um, junk, junk, push bikes. And a lot of stuff that doesn't have to be in here. I don't like it. Anyway, um... That's it for now. I've got a lot more projects coming up. I've got, had a lot of stuff come through the mail, which um, need to be fitted to my cars, and I will show you as I go. So remember to subscribe, and I will see you next time.